welcome to the 2022 Running on Empty Festival. We're here in Coba and this festival is all about celebrating the 40th anniversary of Running on Empty, that cult Australian classic movie that was recorded right here on location in town. So let's go take a look. with the founder and organiser of the festival, John De Bruin. John, what can we expect this weekend? Um, yesterday we had a cruise uh, for the Queen and had a parade down the main street, 125 cars. Today we head down to Cambellago, to Rebels Garage. Tonight we've got Bands Night. Tomorrow we've got the show and shine and tomorrow night we finish off with a movie. Great. And what's it been like seeing all these people roll into town? It's fantastic. Um, you never know what to expect, how many people will actually turn up and it's been fantastic to see them all in town. Great. Well, I guess it's off to the Rebel? Rebel fight. Garage down to Campbell ago. Um, it's all set up, ready to roll, and um, these people can't wait. Fantastic. So, Rebel Garage it is? Yes, it is. On the way. <laughs> with John Clark, the director of Running On Empty. John, what was it like making the film and, and what were some of the highlights? Well, uh, um, largely it was a relatively unpleasant experience, but not for the reasons you might think. Um, I'd been involved in TV commercials for uh, 10, 12 years. I'd worked with almost all the crew that I worked with on Running On Empty and my worry was the actors, how I, because uh, the actors could make or break the film. By the end of the film, uh, I was really good friends with all the actors. We had a really good idea of the film that we were making. And one of the crew came up to me at the end of the film and said, I'm really sorry about the film. And I said, why is that? And he said, well, you wanted to make one sort of film and we didn't want to let you make it. And that was really very surprising. And how about, you know, when we're thinking about being here 40 years on with all these people celebrating and we're right out the front of the Rebel's Garage, how does that make you feel? It's very strange. It's like it's happening to somebody else. And it's wonderful, you know, it's terrific that everybody here feels a part of the film and they own the film in a way that we don't. So we're just here, well, I'm just here and my wife and, and Terry and so on, and we're just contributing to this, this festival and the vibe to try and help Cobar and all the people, you know, get, get, get as much out of the place and of the event that they can. It's, it's wonderful, that part of it. Oh, fantastic. Thank you so much. And congratulations on an amazing legacy. <laughs> Not one that my children might want to share, perhaps. <laughs> Terry Serio, the lead actor in the film. Terry, what's it like to be back here 40 years later celebrating the film with all these people? Pretty wild. Um, and is this, this car, my God, um, what a beast. It, it brings back a lot of memories. Um, it's, it's, it's just fantastic. I mean, I, I, who, John and I were, John the director, who you just spoke to, and I were riding out in this car, this beautiful uh, Falcon, the, the Phase 3, and um, just reminiscing how all those years ago, when we were shooting here, we, if we thought we would be doing this then, we would have been kind of, nah, that couldn't happen. And because so many films disappear. So many films made in that era of just people just going, yeah, barely remember them. But Running on Empties has a life of, life of its own. And can you tell me about the Rebel Garage? Yeah, well, um, this is... Um, this is Rebel's place. So Rebel built his 57 Chevy here in this garage <laughs> and, and he lived in a house next door. Um, he, he lived out in the, in the middle of nowhere so that he could still drive because he drove blind, you know. No, don't tell anyone that that, that that actually happened, but that's real. <laughs> that's actually what he did. Um, so he lived out in the middle of nowhere so he could still live his passion. We just stumbled upon it when, when the three of us in the, in the Phase 3 Falcon, um, you know, pulled up because we were struggling to, with the mechanics. We, uh, 
we just happened to run into this guy Rebel who was our saviour in, in the end, you know, because he had this magical car in the garage and we didn't realise it was him who had actually almost run us over the night before, you know, in the dark. <laughs> we, we thought he was insane and the, our characters thought he was insane. Anyway, that's where we are at Rebels and I, I, it sort of makes me sad in a way that they pulled the whole thing down um, but there's this lovely replica here anyway just to, to market it, you know, it's like a... It's like a tombstone, but we're still alive. Yes! <laughs> Absolutely, and growing. And, I mean, yeah. even now we have, there's a huge following for the film. Yeah. What do you think it is that makes it so appealing and relevant, like, all these years later? It just tapped into that, no that notion that any one of us could kind of build a car in the backyard, you know, and, and make it work. It's just full of that sort of uh, Australian resourcefulness. That empowering. Thing. Empowering. It, it Totally. And, and that's that's one of the things that struck people I think they just love it you know and and it and it spawned a whole generation of people who who went and built their own cars I've had so many people come up to me and go Terry I built my car because of you guys you know really all that stuff you know? so it's pretty special thank you so much it's been such a pleasure meeting you yeah likewise we're here at the show and shine event and there are hundreds of amazing cars that have come to Coba from all over Australia so let's go check it out I'm here with Jenny Cleave and she has a very rare 1957 Chevy and it's got quite a story. Can you tell me a bit about it? Yeah, I'd love to. Uh, I have imported my Chevy from the States, from Texas. I found it on the internet and I've searched for one for many, many years. It's a very rare edition of the Chevy. It used to be the businessman's coupe, so it has no back seat in it. Um, and they used to race them in NASCAR and a lot of them got smashed up, so there's not a great deal of them left in the world. I haven't seen another one in around Australia before, but I'm sure they're out there somewhere. It didn't come from the States like this. I actually brought it over um, and took it into Southern Rod and Custom in Shepparton and it went in just for a few minor details and it came out blown. So it stayed in there for roughly a year. We did a few mods to it and yeah, and today I look at it and think how lucky I am to have it. So it is, have and has been a very big passion of mine and still is. My poor husband's had to put up with me for the last 30 years. I've driven him insane about a blown 57 Chev and now I have one, Holly, so I'm just wrapped with it. Fantastic. Thank you so much. And, and this is like, you know, hats off to you. This is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much. I'm here with Val Domitor in front of his EK Holden. Can you tell us a bit about your car? Uh, yeah, I can. I built it in uh, 2000 for a copy because the original one got trashed, apparently. Uh, made it a red motor, so like a five speed. Um, yeah, it drives really good. Fantastic. And I've heard that you've got two other cars that were in the movie, is that correct? Uh, yes, yeah, so I got the original 57 Chevy and also the 53 from um, the 53 Ram, sorry. Excellent. And um, how is your experience of the festival? I mean, we're 40 years on from the movie. What's it, what's it been like? It's been excellent, yeah. I meet a lot of new people, uh, yeah, even people I don't know and they know me, which is interesting. <laughs> um, don't remember names, but yeah, everyone's good. It's been an excellent weekend. I'm here with Ted King, who actually worked on the movie, didn't you? Can you tell me about that? Yeah, sure. I was in, uh, asked to, to help the stunt guys actually prepare the cars for the vehicles which were used out of the reservoir here. And I was the one that sort of worked with the other guys to actually help uh, put all the, the flame bars in the front and, and set the cars up for uh, the, typically the stunts, which none of them went right anyway, but... You know, no, no warranty on that, and, but everything went really good that way. So it was an interesting time for me, sort of work on them. Fantastic. Yeah. And can you tell me about the car that you've got here today? This car is a 1934 Rio. Uh, Rio is an American car. The O stands for Oldsmobile. Uh, the two first initials is the, is the manufacturer's initials, Ransom Eli Olds. So that's why it's all the... the, the uh, as a self-shifter, this one's the forerun of the automatic. Uh, it's got two so it's changes of gears automatically at 14 mile an hour. Um, yeah, so it's a nice cruising car, six-cylinder American car, and uh, it was originally a, a car that was um, um, bought in out of Melbourne. A farmer down there bought it for his daughter for a 21st birthday present, and she drove it round until about 1960 when she was getting um, 
and we're tired of driving it and she put the ding in the front mudguard and then uh, and wouldn't drive it after that so we went in the shed and uh, sat in there for quite some time and an uncle of hers got hold of it and he started to do some work on it, jacked it up in the shed and do some, pull the brakes off and then um, he uh, passed away in his sleep and the doors of the shed never got opened again until over a year ago when I bought it. I'm here with Paul Vella and you've got a 1957 Chevy with quite a restoration story. Can you tell me about it? Yeah, this um, this has been about a 40 year dream of mine to bring the car back. That was I had the original car, and um, you know, I come across a mate of mine, Timmy Wales, with the skill set to build the car, and over a few beers and all that sort of stuff. He said to me, you know what? He said I can build that for you. So henceforth, I sourced out a, a car from Sydney, a '57. It was a four door, and Tim's converted it into a two door, and he's done all the work on this car: the tilt front, cutting the back guard. A lot of old photos of mine, a lot of beers and that sort of thing. So, yeah, and this is the result that he's got. Like, this was a a five-year build, but when we found out, you know, the Fox car wasn't coming, uh, John De Bruyne sort of rung us up and said, is there any chance of getting this car to the festival here at Cobar? So from a five-year build, it's gone into a two-year build. A lot of blood, sweat and tears, a lot of tears, like, and a lot of beer drunk in between. But, yeah, it's been an awesome build and it's a credit to Tim. And um, he hasn't just given me my old car back, he's given me the memories of my father and my Uncle Joe that helped me with the first one. Mm. So yeah, it's been an amazing build and an emotional ride, mm. but it's um, a fantastic outcome, not just for myself, but for everyone here at mm. Cobar and so we can raise money for the War Memorial. Yeah, so it's been fantastic. I'm here with Mick Lehman and you've got a tribute to the Mad Max Interceptor. Can you tell me about it? Okay, so it all started, I uh, wanted to go to the reunion for Mad Max down the Clunes, down in Victoria, and uh, picked up the rolling shell of the XB up in Brisbane, brought it back on trailer, obviously, because it was a rolling shell. <laughs> anyway, so it took me a year to build, um, took time off from work, as usual, brought the spoiler kit for it and a um, lot of days cutting the rust out and replacing it all and uh, finding a supercharger for it and uh, actually doing the supercharger so you can turn it off and on. Long story short, so I had to go and source another 302, so that's what's ended up in that. Uh, found an old gearbox, chucked it in, and virtually when we went to Clunes, the paint was still drying on the car. Basically, what you see is what you get. Yeah, she's not pristine, but it's mine. <laughs> I love it. Fantastic. And how have you enjoyed the festival this year? Awesome. These guys, like, everyone comes from so far away. Usually we're the ones, because I'm, I'm local to Cobo, obviously, um, we're, we're the ones that's got to drive five or six hours to see such beautiful cars. But for them to come to Cobo, just wow. Like, truly amazing. I'm here with Leanne Babbage in front of her 57 Chevy. Can you tell me about your car? Okay, we've owned it for 16 years. It was black when we bought it. We did a three and a half year ground up restoration. Um, so we put a new motor, gearbox, diff, wheels, everything that could be replaced, we've replaced. We drove it from the Gold Coast. It's just clicked over 80,000 kilometres, so we drive it everywhere. And it's uh, got a 383 stroker motor, so it's about 440 horsepower at the flywheel. Um, I've drag raced it. Um, with seatbelts in it. <laughs> um, we take it to all sorts of events. Um, the furthest we've taken it is most where you Mount Gambia in South Australia. Wow, fantastic. Thank you so much. That's okay. I'm here with Rodney Barnes and my goodness, what a Sandman. Can you tell us a bit about it? Yeah, this is a, a 79 build HZ Sandman. It's in its original factory colours, which was malachite. Um, that was a colour that was an early Commodore colour and because this went through the factory in 79 it was able to get that colour. So it's a very dark green as you can see. It's a 332 stroker motor, 308 stroke to 332, five speed super gearbox and it's named the player, you'll see that on the um, windscreen. That comes from the original owner basically, he had a spade shaped arch in it when I got the van uh, some seven years ago. And from that spade-shaped arch, I've repaired it and fixed it, but from that spade-shaped arch become the gambling and the card theme. And in the back, there's a bit of a bar and a, and a gambling theme, a roulette wheel, etc. It's been on the road since about 2016, and, uh, yeah, it, it's pretty nice, and it's nice to own. It's, of course, owned by me and my wife. 
<laughs> so she gets a bit of a say in it, but uh, yeah. Fantastic. And how's your weekend been? Uh, it's been lovely here. Nice. Um, we've had really good weather compared to the weather previously. And, and, and I find that the whole town turns into a moving car show. Like we sat down on the street yesterday afternoon and just watched the cars roll by mm. and... Uh, and it's just the atmosphere and the whole town is part of it. I'm here with Mark McLean in front of his amazing 57 Chev, which is an exact replica from the movie. Yep. It's got a bit of a backstory. Can you tell me about it? Um, I was down here in 2018 when they had the first one. Uh, loved it so much, had to come back. Um, this movie and car has changed my life. Um, in the early 80s when this movie came out, I went to the Ken Hill Drive-In, which is now Bunnings. Um, in Brisbane and I rode my push bike there and sat in the cafeteria and watched this movie and said I've got to own one. Well, in saying that, this is about the tenth one I've owned now, but this is one that looks like the car out of the movie and love every minute of it and yeah, it's uh, been to the drags, it's run a 1060 at 132 miles before at Willowbank Raceway, so uh, yeah, it's a pretty stout bit of gear and it creates so much attention wherever we go. Everyone's taking photos of it, and I get so many young kids that have known the movie because they all their their old man has watched it, and then their kids know most of the lines, and they've, you know, like you get like so many younger people generations that know about such an old movie. Fantastic! And how's your weekend been? Ah, uh, it's been great. Yeah, been uh, been a long drive. We've got like you know, 15 hour drive back home tomorrow, and um, a bit tired. Can't wait to sleep in my own bed. <laughs> Had a few beers over the last few weekends. It's, it's all now starting to take its toll. So, got a sore voice when talking to everyone. So, yeah, it's been great. Well, fantastic, and my goodness, congratulations on a beautiful car. No worries. <laughs> Appreciate that. You've all done a cracking weekend. Yep, and John has too. Well, that's a wrap on another great festival here in Cobar. We hope you've enjoyed the 40th anniversary of Running on Empty, and we'll see you next time.